Well, thanks to 24-7 Sports, we've got a new potential Big 12 favorite in football next year. Welcome into the channel. I am John Kurtz. Here on this channel, we talk college football, college basketball, and conference realignment, all from a Big 12 angle. Please consider subscribing if you have not. Live shows Wednesdays and Sundays, they are a blast. Please like the video. Leave a comment underneath as well. Love me, hate me, agree, disagree. All of that is very welcome. You can support the channel on Venmo at john kurtz four. Uh, today, I bring you a bit of a prediction on the Big 12 next year. I've already been a bit surprised at how some of the preseason Vegas odds rolled out with this, namely that when we saw them from Bet Online not that long ago and talked about them on a live show, Arizona was not the preseason favorite. Uh, Arizona, I thought, absolutely should be a preseason top 15 team. That, of course, was before Jed Fish left. At that point in time, Arizona had 18 of 22 starters returning. They have a dynamic quarterback a dynamic receiver, that combination of Fafita and McMillan, about as good as it gets, uh, certainly in the Big 12 and one of the better duos in the country. And it, it was a very exciting season on tap for Arizona. Now, fast forward, we know that unfortunately for the Wildcats, Jed Fish has left and gone to Arizona. Arizona has hired Brent Brennan from San Jose State. Uh, that's been a polarizing hire of sorts, but many people do think he can do a good job based on doing a decent job at a really, really tough job at San Jose State. Either way, very much up in the air whether or not you would consider Arizona to still be the preseason favorite in the Big 12. I am going to have to reconsider that based on how many guys they have in the portal right now, but they could still come back. It is important to mention that. They could still come back. Either way, Assessing the rest of the contenders, if you are looking at the list of Big 12 contenders, you're probably thinking six to seven teams. I'd still throw Arizona in that first tier. I would certainly have Utah in that first tier with the respect for them and Cam Rising, who is coming back next year, and everything Kyle Whittingham has done. Oklahoma State is defending team that played in the Big 12 championship, the defending Big 12 runner-up, if you will. They certainly have earned a right to be in there. Kansas has Jalen Daniels coming back if he can stay healthy which is a huge question. Uh, he is certainly a dynamic quarterback. They have the entire receiving core and Devin Neal returning. That offense alone and a pretty cushy schedule puts the Jayhawks in contention there. West Virginia and Iowa State would be two kind of on the fringes there. West Virginia had a nine-win season, but their schedule will get much harder this year after they got a bit of a kiss from the Big 12 schedule with the uneven scheduling now last year. That will be the question. Can they hold up against a much more difficult schedule and Iowa State was 7-5, and five, ended the year nice with a great offensive pounding of K-State in the snow game uh, in Manhattan. But Matt Campbell has shown a more limited ceiling than some of these coaches out there. So what do you make of the clones? But I think it's fair to include them. Notice, I have not said Kansas State yet, and I realize I'm a K-State guy. I am just bringing you what has been predicted here by 24-7 Sports. No agenda, I promise you, uh, but, you know, you can be skeptical if you want, I suppose. Here is the projection. Okay, here is the projection. It comes from 24-7 Sports. Uh, is this Brandon Crawford? I believe it is. No, Brad Crawford. My, my bad, Brad. Brandon Crawford. I feel like that's an athlete. Anyway, you can see their playoff predictions. It's the first year of the 12-team playoff, and he has K-State playing Texas in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl in a 4-5 matchup, which obviously would be after that first round of playoff games. And K-State, by virtue of being in this scenario, the uh, fourth highest ranked conference champ there would get that four seed. Here is the breakdown of how you get there. He has Texas playing Liberty in a 12-5 matchup, which is interesting there. Texas being a five seed, not winning the SEC, but still getting in with the work that they're doing in the transfer portal right now. That is certainly understandable. Uh, Ole Miss and Michigan, uh, South Florida. All right, that's another Fairly bold prediction there. South Florida, which has really struggled, but putting them in as the AAC champ uh, against Oregon. You've got LSU, Notre Dame. Uh, then we get to those quarterfinal matchups. It says, as projected champions of the Big 12, K-State could be the only representative in the expanded playoff from the league next season, given the expectation of a ton of teams beating up on one another. And the Wildcats reward for getting a first-round bye, a date with familiar rival Texas with a trip to the semifinals on the line. Uh, unfortunately, he does not have K-State advancing past it then because it turns into Ohio State and Texas, Georgia, Florida State in the semifinals, according to uh, Brad Crawford's predictions here. But I will just say this, okay? I will just say this. Let me 
stop sharing the screen there. Uh, there is a compelling enough case for K-State. I would not make them the overwhelming favorite. I just think they belong in the top tier. They're going to have a tough non-conference schedule with Arizona coming to Manhattan and a road trip to Tulane, who has had a nice portal haul. But the case for K-State, and I think a lot of the excitement probably comes from quarterback Avery Johnson, who as a true freshman had a really good game and was the MVP of the Pop-Tart Bowl, uh, showed off his dynamic running ability, also had a great couple of throws, particularly the back shoulder fade touchdown to Jace Brown um, in the end zone to uh, to seal the win. It was the game's ceiling touchdown there at the end. He is arguably the most important recruit in K-State history, highest rated that they've had since Josh Freeman, uh, which obviously goes back about a decade and a half. And uh, he is going to be poised potentially for a breakout year next year. It's basically what pushed Will Howard out the door. So you have a high ceiling at quarterback. Chris Kleiman obviously won the Big 12 a couple of years ago. He has been consistent outside of the COVID year. He's won eight games every single season. So that would kind of put you in contention by default. And he's never had program depth like he has right now, building off of the best recruiting class that he's had in last year's class with a bunch of guys who will now be set to take the field, including one Avery Johnson, who will be featured in a more prominent role. DJ Giddens, one of the best running backs in the conference, is coming back. Uh, there is a lot to like there about K-State. They're doing a solid job in the portal as well. Dante Cephas, a receiver from Penn State and a former Kent State receiver who was highly sought after before going to Penn State, is another guy coming in tow. So your case there is, you've got a coach who's done it before, a coach who is really consistent, and a coach who now has a quarterback with a higher ceiling than I know Will Howard's at Ohio State. But if you've watched Avery Johnson play at all, much higher ceiling than what Will Howard had at quarterback. So there is your case for the Wildcats. I'm not sitting here again telling you that I would agree with that right now and feel confident in saying that K-State will be a team with a bye in the, in the college football playoff and making it in that way by winning the league. Um, but I certainly think they, they are worthy of being in discussion. But look, on this channel, I'm very much here for all of the discussion. I am here to listen to what you guys have to say about it. We'll keep tabs on what predictions roll in throughout the year because, you know, it's what we do. It's the offseason. Unfortunately, the college football offseason, we will continue to talk about it. And who knows? There could be more changes coming, right? And I'm not just talking about the portal for everyone across the league, but if you've watched my videos lately, all the coaching changes that could happen here. We're still waiting on Jim Harbaugh to make his decision. Michigan could be a team that comes after a Chris Kleiman, a Lance Leipold, or a Matt Campbell. All three of those guys have already been on candidate lists from The Athletic and CBS Sports. So hold on tight for now, but that is at least one national college football writer's opinion on what is going to happen in the Big 12. So let me know in the comments. Uh, who are we missing? Do you agree? Disagree? Who do you have winning the Big 12? Let me know in the comments. Please like the video if you would. All of that stuff really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, once again, if you'd like to support the channel, if you are so inclined, you can do so on Venmo at john kurtz 4 Make sure you get subscribed so you know when it is that I am dropping the live shows on Wednesdays and Sundays and everything else in between. Would love to have you a part of those live shows. They are a blast. Appreciate all of you guys. Take care, and I will talk to you soon.